There's something about the characters in My Hero Academia, whether it be someone you're not expecting to like, they'll blow you away either with crazy action or just something that's really personal with their either backstory or current story in present day. Or then you'll get characters like Togeda, who you expect to be a total badass who's going to emotionally move you, but you still even can't accurately predict how amazing he'll be in an episode where seemingly he just lost his quirk. Also, he could continue to smile in the face of a crying girl so she wouldn't feel afraid like she always had for all her life. Like, this is without a doubt the best episode so far of this season of My Hero Academia. I heard a lot of people hyping this episode up, and surprisingly, I wasn't spoiled for what was going to happen, which usually I do get spoiled, which isn't a big deal. I just, you know, I remove the trash so other people can, you know, talk in my comment section not feeling like they're worried that they're going to get spoiled. But somehow, I avoided this, and I don't know how, maybe just automated filters or something, but it was pretty great to walk in out of this episode having... No idea what it was going to be other than people were excited and holy shit, I was not ready for the amazement that we just witnessed. I mean, there's something that's really interesting about Togata's quirk where I was like, okay, clearly it's cool, the idea of pretty much just passing through things, but I wasn't really sure how that would look in combat, like especially going all out towards a villain such as Overhaul, someone who can break down and reassemble pretty much anything, and then we got another character who basically just makes everyone admit to whatever question he asks, and he has a goddamn gun, right? So it's like, okay, there's clearly going to be some hardship here. And I like how it wasn't even really like he was struggling to go up against Overhaul's quirk, which is what I thought was going to be the challenge. Like, you know, it'd be two people just butting heads. But what they did, which was once again really smart with the combat in the series, is they did something unpredictable while giving him a harder challenge than just, is he stronger than me? They actually gave him a mental challenge, and I really liked having like this one ability that basically makes him feel drunk, he's kind of disoriented, he can't really focus all that well, which for someone who's all about focus, because if he messes up, he could literally cut himself into two because he's passing through so many things. You got one character who's just shooting a damn gun at you as the main man is just walking away with a little girl who's crying for her life. That is such an interesting idea for a quirk and just like a battle overall, mixing and matching something that's actually pretty mundane in comparison to the big man in charge. But for someone who's all about trying to get to that objective, just keep smiling, be the hero for all, it was really interesting to see how even when he was not even at 100%, he rose to the occasion, and to see how they directed this fight was really interesting. I love the idea of basically, a lot of times you can't even understand exactly what's happening because you'll see him over here, and then you'll see part of his body here, and then they just smoothly animate a big punch, and you're like, holy shit, imagine actually going up against a character like this, who you can't even totally tell where he is because he'll slip through the ground, slip through the walls, and then out of nowhere, you just see a punch coming your way as a half a head is sticking through a wall. Like, it would actually be frightening even for a villain, right? But this man is just smiling or just really looking like a hero the entire time, so he never comes across as a villain like maybe some characters' abilities would, like someone like Red Rai, he kind of looks like a villain with his overall ability, but here he just looks like a hero doing something that you typically associate something from a slasher horror movie would do. And it was so interesting to see him, like, get progressively more and more mad but in doing so, became more and more of a hero. Like, this is something that typically goes to, like, Deku or something like that, and yes, Deku does come in at the end of the episode, as does the other characters, so it's not like he's going to be alone here, but still, this is something that you typically associate that would be written for our main central lead. It feels like something that's like, okay, he's, like, he's pushing himself, he's pushing himself, he's breaking, he doesn't care, he's going to be that hero for all, he's going to make sure people smile, but you gave it to someone who I think actually really deserved it in this episode, someone who proved himself that without him being there, Eri would have been taken away. Like, he was the only quirk that would be able to get to them in time because he could slip through all the walls that Mimic was basically doing. So it was incredible to see just the level of determination and resolve he had for just kicking this guy's ass who deserves to get his ass kicked. I mean, this is a person who seemingly just stripped away the title from the man in charge because he didn't like the idea of doing things honorably. We learned in this episode that it wasn't even his daughter. Who the hell knows who it was? It probably was someone a part of this crew, whether it be the former leader or someone, some underling or something like that. So, like, this man just doesn't value people's lives whatsoever, even those who basically were kind of, like, saving his life as a child. Overhaul is a complete and utter vile villain, but that's why we love him, because he shakes up the cast and characters like Deku or Togata 
so damn well and shatters their world literally and figuratively. It's just amazing to watch it all kind of unravel and even though they heavily set up for someone to lose their quirk this season, it just like with the amount of drugs that they were basically introducing, even though they only had like five after a month's labor, when you start seeing how the episode is progressing, I was definitely getting worried, but they did an interesting choice of they bring up the whole like quirk destroying drug right at the beginning and then for a majority of the episode they don't even touch upon it they don't even hint at it maybe a majority of viewers but at least for myself it lets me let my guard down be like okay you know i'm not even worried about him losing his ability i'm worried about him being touched by overhaul and literally getting killed that's actually a really smart thing they did because a lot of times in an anime like this if you're to bring up the idea of a quirk destroying drug that's all we would be focusing on, but by having a villain who literally can shatter anything, doesn't care if Aerie gets destroyed because as long as he does it quick enough, he can reassemble her. He has no value for anything, so it wasn't even like, oh, we're worried about Togeta's quirk. No, we were worried about his actual life. So it actually allowed for that subversion. So we're like, okay, this is what we're worried about. And then you see the gun getting loaded and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we knew who was going to lose their quirk at that point. And the idea that he didn't even flinch, he just immediately charged in because for this little girl, she's only ever knew fear. That was such a Deku move applied to a character who's equally memorable. And I love that. I love how rather than just saying he has to, you know, survive 100%, keep his quirk, keep his just charisma or something like that. Instead, they let him seemingly lose it for good um i guess until we finally have that confirmation it's always up in the air but i mean they don't say that this will destroy any and all quirk unless it absolutely will i mean if this was another anime sure possibly that could happen but i don't feel like my hero academia would do that and the fact that even after losing it the idea of like a shield that someone feels invincible because they can slip through anything still continues to charge in and punch that bastard's face like that was so amazing and to see his final moments in this episode that is a hero. I just love how My Hero Academia, it makes you every single time think you have a good understanding on what it wants to do with its theme and characters, throw at least one curveball in an episode like this quite a few. I love the ideas of heroes in My Hero Academia because it doesn't feel just like that righteous, do nothing wrong, always get the job done, and never suffer, but rather you can have a character who just, he has a quirk that should fail and not let him become a hero, but he worked his ass off to be that perfect hero, didn't even flinch him, didn't even take a moment to think, hmm, do I let her get hit or do I get hit? No, he didn't even think, he just jumped in front of that bullet so a girl wouldn't be scared, so she wouldn't be hurt. That's what a hero should do in this series. And the fact that you know someone like Deku, you know someone like Tokuto would always do that without a moment's notice, it's why they have that same spirit of All Might, someone who smiles in the face of death itself and makes sure the people surrounding him make sure that they know. I don't care if I get hurt, as long as you're happy and safe. Like, that's exactly what All Might's kind of legacy represents, and to have more than one character represent that, and not even care if he does get hurt, whether he loses his ability, whether he gets killed, probably didn't even know exactly what was going on there. He just saw something getting fired at a little girl, and he jumped without a second thought. That's how you know this episode was crazy, and the music when they're really building up towards, like, the, you know, final four minutes there, that shit was, like, OST from like, you know, the end of like an epic movie or something, that shit was just rising, I was feeling a bunch of emotions, I was like, holy shit, I feel like a hero myself, I'm charging in, and even when it looked like everything was going to shit, he was gonna lose his quirk, he was going to die or something, I never let my guard down, I still felt like him charging in, not caring, because he knew it would be okay. And the fact that this isn't one of those anime where it always has to be one character saves the day, the fact that Togeta just held his own, did so much amazing thing, and then you saw Deku and the others come crashing in after the credits there, it just goes to show you that this isn't a series where people just have to keep powering up or they don't have to suffer or sacrifice things for the objective. It's actual teamwork and determination to deal with the Yakuza, to deal with the League of Villains, and that's amazing. And on the topic of the League of Villains, they actually kicked off the episode pretty much giving a good understanding on how two of our characters kind of joined up with the Yakuza, and how they kind of manipulated their way into basically being trusted, which I thought was actually pretty good. I, I wasn't really anticipating it or really wanting it before I saw it, but ability that basically lets people just say whatever he wants them to say. Hey, did your boss say that you were going to betray us or give you any ideas of how to betray us? And they have to immediately say no without even thinking or tell them their abilities. They try to push back, obviously, because, well, you know, they don't want to tell the people they clearly want to betray in the future 
what their abilities are. So I like how it set up so you understood not only this ability that was going to be really relevant for the Toga to fight, but also kind of cleared all the areas that they needed to to make us understand why they started to betray the Yagusa and how they ultimately infiltrated their way in there because someone like Overhaul is not an idiot. Like, this is one of those episodes that incorporated a little bit of backstory, a little bit of content that, you know, maybe not everyone was anticipating, but actually served a pretty good purpose on how the League of Villains got their way in, while also dedicating a large chunk of time into a really incredible fight. And I loved it. I just feel like every time I think I know where this anime wants to go, it throws me a few curveballs and I'm just like, holy shit. This anime could easily just be cliches and powers and it would sell like hotcakes, but instead the author wrote it in such a way to feel human and vulnerable. And I love every single minute that I watch of this amazing anime and who knows how next week is going to go down. I thought it was amazing from the music to a bunch of the animation in this episode when it really had to punch someone like sure there's obviously still frames and cutting around but in moments where you can't even tell what a character is doing I thought it was actually pretty important to have those kind of like slideshows because this character is passing through so much it almost made us feel just as disoriented as the villains themselves or so I thought but what did everyone think either for source material readers anime originals like myself what did you think of this amazing episode and Togata's sacrifice because it was pretty damn amazing I have to say let me know be sure to like the video if you did enjoy and remember to hit that subscribe button if you have any new rounds here so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one